Okay, so we have this uh, steel tool E of 29,000 KSI in a forging machine to connect to the forks at its ends. All right, note that it is pin pin against strong axis buckling and fix fix against weak axis buckling. Imagine you had a ruler, right, a, a thin ruler, and its cross sectional area. Do you, do you notice, right? Note from the figure, you can see the link has cross sectional area. Its cross sectional area is 0.5 by 1.5, right? If you were to push on this ruler, its weak axis, it would buckle about its weak axis if you kept everything else um, consistent. But since you know that it wants to buckle this way, do you notice how it, it pushes, it, it's guarding against the weak axis buckling? All right, you know, you might hold it differently. You might try to keep it from buckling against weak axis. And that's, that's what this tool does. Um, it, it keeps it, it tries to keep it from buckling this way, but there's nothing really keeping it from buckling against its strong axis. So, so that, that, that's what it says. It, it is pin and pin against strong axis buckling, fixed, fixed against weak axis buckling. Which axis is strong, which axis is weak? Uh, the stronger axis is the larger moment of in inertia, the moment of area, yeah, moment of um, area, moment of inertia. Sorry, uh, the the strong axis is the larger eye, the weak axis is the smaller eye. What are the eyes? What's the eye? This is a rectangular cross-sectional area. So you know, if this is like x and this is y, my um, i x would be one twelfth b h cubed would be 0 0.141 inches to the fourth. My I Y, 1 12th H B cubed, 0 0.0156 inches to the fourth. So here is my weak axis. Here is my strong axis. All right. Okay, so the P critical. So first, let's look at strong and weak. Look at them separately. Figure out which one is going to buckle easiest. Which one's going to buckle at the smaller force? So uh, let's look at, we're trying to find the maximum allowable load P that it can carry without buckling. So let's look at the strong axis first. Let's look at the strong axis. P critical, we've got our equation, pi squared EI over KL squared. Pi squared E is 29,000 KSI. The I of the strong axis, 0 0.141 inches to the fourth. The K for the strong axis, K is 1. Length for either of these would be 24 and square that. So the P critical, 69.9 kips. That is the force that it would buckle about the strong axis. That might be my answer. But what if it had already buckled? What if the weak axis buckles easier? So let's, let's calculate the weak axis buckling. P critical pi squared EI over KL squared. Pi, of course, is going to stay the same. E is going to stay the same because it's the material. But the I is going to be different. This, it, it has an I of point. 0156. All right. And then this has a K. It's fixed, fixed against weak axis buckling. So it is 0.5 times 24. Be sure to square the 0.5 and the 24. All right. So this would give us a force of 31.1 kips. So let's compare the two. All right. Uh, if I apply a force up to 69.9, it's going to buckle against a strong axis. If I apply a force of 31.1, it's going to buckle about the weak axis. So let's answer the question. This might seem counterintuitive, but it's got, we've done this before in this class, or at least in mechanics. Determine the maximum allowable load P. Do you see that the maximum allowable load we can give is the smaller one, right? Because I can't go, I can't go above 31.1, right? If I go to 31.2, it has buckled. 
So it, it will ne it will not in this case it won't buckle about this axis. It's always going to buckle about this this axis because of, of the smaller force. So the maximum force P thirty one point one kips. The maximum force P thirty one point one kips. Okay. So for buckling, column buckling, we've got our equation, pi squared EI over KL squared. I'm going to give you the K value, uh, but, you know, if it's pin and pin, K is 1, fixed and fixed, K is 0. 0.5, pin and fixed, you know, uh, fixed and free, pinned and free, uh, but I'll give you those K values. Sometimes in one direction, it is supported differently than in another direction. So, so do those two directions separately. Do the strong axis buckling and the weak axis buckling separately and compare the two. If you, if you want the maximum allowable load, P, it's going to be the smaller force because it, it will buckle uh, against that smaller force before it could even get up to a force high enough to buckle the strong axis buckling. Okay?